So question A10 from the 2003 Advanced Tyre, an integration. Now, one of these awkward integrations, the thing about integrations are they can be incredibly difficult. You can just about differentiate anything fairly quickly, but to try and go backwards, to try and integrate can become quite tricky. Some of them are so difficult you can only use numerical methods to get at the answer. This is a case where I wouldn't be able to find a formula immediately that would give me the integral of this. I'd have to work my way up to it. You'd have to form some sort of recurrence relation that could take you up to the one you required. So that's why it's starting off with saying, well, what's the value of i1? Well, when n is 1, that'll be the integral from 0 to 1 of just x to the power 1, e to the negative x dx. So, an obvious candidate for because that isn't the derivative of that, an obvious candidate for integration by parts. Well, I can whittle that away, so if I differentiate that and integrate that, that should work. So, integration, I'll integrate first. Leave the x, integrating that, well, that just goes back to that, but divide by the derivative of the function it's acting on of negative x, that'll be the negative of that. Minus the integral from 0 to 1 of, now carry that forward, differentiate that and it becomes 1 times it dx. So that makes that, taking the negative out of that, negative x e to the negative x, that sign makes that a plus from 0 to 1 of e to the negative x. But this has to be evaluated. So strictly speaking I should have either put a bracket around that, an evaluation bracket because that's been done from 0 to 1, or another way around that would be just to leave out the integration limits here and put the whole thing down, going from 0 to 1 this way. Whichever way you prefer. So evaluating this expression then would be, I've got negative x e to the negative x minus e to the negative x to evaluate from 0 to 1. Now I could tidy that up. I could take out negative e to the x and leave a, a, a 1 plus x, or I could just, put, I'll just leave it the way it is just now. So evaluating at 1, that would be negative 1 times e to the negative 1 minus e to the negative 1 minus 0. So that's 0 minus e to the negative, so that's just e to the 0. So that's negative 2 e to the negative 1 minus minus makes it plus 1. I think I'll write that as i1 equals 1 minus, but instead of 2e to the negative 1, I think I'll write that as 2 over e. So part b, it says similarly, so you're still going to be using integration by parts, show that i n is n times i n minus 1 minus, I don't like that wee thing there, e to the power negative 1, 1 over e. Notice it's n is greater than 2 this time because it wouldn't apply to the very first of them because there isn't anything before it in this recurrence relation. Notice that's what you've got now. How do you find the next one? You do this to the previous one. So I can't do that for n equals 1 because there wasn't a previous. So that's why it's got a 2 there. But you probably just ignore that anyway. So just start at the beginning. What is i to the n? It's from 0 to 1 of x to the n, e to the negative x, dx. Standard integration by parts. I'll whittle this one away so that'll get differentiated, that'll get integrated. So, integrate first. Leave that, integrate that, negative e to the negative x. Minus the integral of, from 0 to 1, notice I'm putting this in this time because I know I'm not going to keep on going and going. The only part I'm actually going to evaluate is this one. So we'll separately put down the evaluation for that part here. Then, that's been done, so I'll leave it alone. Now differentiate that, n, x to the n minus 1, dx. Well, that's ready to, uh, to evaluate. So when x is 1, 1 to the anything is 1, times negative e to the negative 1. Too many negatives for my liking there. Minus... And then handily, when x is 0, the whole thing's just going to be 0. But this part, I can take out that negative and make that a plus. Take out that multiple n and be left just with x to the n minus 1 times e to the negative x dx. So, what is this lot here? Well, that's a negative 
E, I don't like that negative up there, so I'll make it 1 over E. And this part is plus N lots of, now that part is the same as this, only instead of having an N, it's got an N minus 1. So that's the same as the integral for N minus 1, which means that I to the N is N lots of I to the, not to the, I N minus 1 minus 1 over E, I'll put it prefer it in that form. Yes, you would put it into that index form for integrations if you wanted. Part C, evaluate I3. Well, just like it in the higher, there's a recurrence relation. Just like UN equals A UN minus 1 plus B. And then it would tell you U1, for instance where you start. So I3 would be, well, if I know I1, I can just step through this recurrence relation a couple of times and I'll get there. It's just a case of, well, I start with I3 and nest it all within each other, or I'll just step my way up. I'll just step my way up. So I've got I1 equals 1 minus 2 over E. And yes, I'm going to stick with over E rather than E to the negative 1, which means I2 is equal to 2, 2 times I1 less than it, I1, minus 1 upon E. So it's 2 times this. So it's 2 minus 4 over E, minus 1 over E. Double that, take away 1 over E. So that means that I2 is equal to 2 minus, and that will be 5 over E. And then the one that I actually want is I3. So I3 will be 3 times I2. One less than it, I2, minus 1 over E. So it'll be 3 times this. So it'll be 3 twos are 6, minus 3 fives are 15, minus 1 over E, which means that I3 is finally 6 minus, and that'll be 16 eths. 6 minus 16 over E. So this question was an example of using recurrence relations in solving an integral.